Hi, and welcome to week two, lesson nine for ELA grade 12. I'll be walking you through today's distance learning lesson. Just a quick overview before we get started about what you can expect today. First, we'll spend just a few minutes going over the resources and materials that you'll need for the lesson. I'll give you a brief overview of today's learning, do a quick model of some of the reading and thinking and speaking that you'll be doing during the lesson, and then I'll preview what we'll be doing next time. Let's start with a riddle of the day. I'll read this to you while you follow along on your screen. If you drop me, I'm sure to crack. But give me a smile, and I'll always smile back. What am I? Think about that for a minute if you need to. Read it back to yourself. And if you still need some thinking time, go ahead and pause the video because I'm about to put the answer on the screen. A mirror. So if you drop a mirror, it's probably going to crack. And if you smile at a mirror, you're always going to find someone smiling right back at you. Okay, so now that our brains are warmed up a little bit, let's go ahead and get started with Lesson 9, and you can find this on page 29 of your le learning packet. For today's lesson, you'll also need your note catcher, which is on page 30, and of course you'll need something to write with. The text for today is A Changing World. Um, you'll need access to the entire text today because it's our last day with it, so we're going to be going over the whole thing one more time. Um, so you'll need pages 17 to 20 of your packet. And as a reminder, we've spent uh, the last few lessons reading and analyzing a changing world um, to learn more about the British colonial era. This helps us better understand the author's point of view in other texts that we'll be reading over the next few weeks. There are two guiding questions that I want you to keep thinking about today. First, how did British colonialism complicate the idea of home? And second, how did the key events during this time period relate to finding a home? Our learning target for today is on the screen Go ahead and read it with me. I can identify and analyze the effects of personification in a text and connect evidence from a text to the essential question of the unit. We've spent the last few lessons completing a first reading and close reading of a changing world. Each time you read the text, you made annotations in the margins underlined key sections, and answered questions after reading. Today, I'd like you to go back and read the complete text, so pages 17 through 20 in your packet. As you read, pay attention to the notes and annotations that you made over the past several lessons. You might also find it helpful to skim over the answers that you wrote to all of the questions from lessons 5, 6, 7, and 8. I'll give you some time now to go back and reread A Changing World and the notes and annotations that you made this week. Go ahead and pause the video here. Now that you've reread A Changing World and all of your notes and annotations from the past few lessons, we'll move on to the thinking part of our lesson. Your thinking task today will be to underline the examples of personification that you see in the section called A Time of Recovery. Let's spend a few minutes talking about personification. Person personification is when an author writes about animals or non-living objects as if they were human. So basically, they're giving human characteristics to something that is not human. When authors personify something, they are describing the thing as acting as a living, thinking, feeling human might act. Here are some examples of personification. I'll read them out loud while you follow along with me on the screen. The oil jumped out of the pan. Oil can't really jump. We usually think about people as jumping. So when the author says the oil jumped out of the pan, he's personifying oil. The oil's jumping out of the pan. 
the blizzard swallowed the town. New York is the city that doesn't sleep. Horror looks you right between the eyes. Finally, the new face of Britain. I told you that for the first one, the oil jumping out of the pan was the example of personification. Now I want you to look at the next four sentences or phrases on the screen and think to yourself, what is the author personifying and what words is he using to make that personification? So go ahead and pause this video here so you can see what's on the screen and take a few minutes to think about what the author is personifying in each of these examples and the words that are used to make that personification. Pause the video now. Okay, so you've had some time to think about that. So let's go through these examples together. We've already talked about the first one, the oil jumped out of the pan. In the next example, the blizzard swallowed the town. Swallowing is something that humans do. Blizzards don't swallow, of course. Um, so when the author says the blizzard swallowed the town, it's personification. The same applies here. New York is a city that doesn't sleep. So we're linking the act of sleeping to an inanimate object, the city of New York. Horror looks you right between the eyes. This is actually a song lyric, so it might sound familiar. Um, it's from Michael Jackson's Thriller, so you might want to look that up and listen to the song later on. Um, but in this particular lyric, uh, Michael Jackson is personifying horror. Um, he's saying that it's looking you right between the eyes. Looking obviously is the trait that um, that human that is a human trait, um, and he's linking it with the abstract idea of horror. Finally, the new face of Britain. This might sound familiar. Um, if it does, it's because it's a, a phrase from your reading from this week. So this is a title of a section from A Changing World. Um, and in this particular section heading, the author is saying that Britain has a new face. So he's personifying Britain. Now that we've gone through some examples, let's think about why authors might want to use personification. So why might they want to use this particular type of figurative language in their writing? Take a minute to think about that. Pause the video if you want to here while you keep thinking. When you come back, I'll give you some answers. So the author might want to use personification to describe something to readers so that they can easily understand it. They might do it to emphasize a particular point, or they might even do it just to help the reader paint a picture in their mind. So there's many different types of figurative language, language that authors can use to, to achieve all of these goals. Personification is one of them. Now let's look at one example from the paragraph. So if you remember, your task for this thinking portion is to underline examples of personification from the A Time of Recovery section. So here's one example to get you started. In this particular paragraph, the author, um, the author describes, I'll read the sentence for you. The mill and mining country of the North was no longer the economic heart of the country as it had once been. So here we're saying that the mining country of the North was no longer the economic heart of the country. So we're, we're, we're ascribing the heart of, the, we can say that humans have a heart and we're connecting that with a description of the mill and mining country of the North. So we're personifying that area of the country. That's one example. There are at least two more examples in this paragraph, so go ahead and pause the video now and try and find them yourself. Okay. Now that you've had a chance to do that thinking and underlining on your own, it's time to talk to a family member, caregiver, or friend about the following question. How do key events during this time period relate to finding a home.
pause the video here and talk to someone about that question. Okay, now that you had that conversation, um, let me talk to you about something that you that might have come up in your conversation. Um, so we know that as governments changed and wars affected the political and economic landscape, people's understanding of home might have changed based on leadership and safety. So they may have had one view of their home before political turmoil, but once war started and the economy shifted, their definition of home may have started to change. This could have been because them, they themselves literally had to move out of their home because of safety or for other reasons. So in the process, their, their definition of a home changed. Um, or maybe their understanding of a home changed because they associated their home with the way that their neighborhood felt or their neighbors or just a feeling they had about where they were living. And maybe because of war and political turmoil, those, those things started to change. Maybe their neighborhood underwent a change. Maybe their neighbors moved, or maybe their routines needed to be adjusted. So all of these things um, could have played, in, played a part um, into why people's um, definition of finding a home could have changed during this time period. So now that we've read, thought, and talked, our last part for today is to do some daily writing. So on your note catcher on page 30, you're going to be writing the answers to two questions. The first question is, how does the author use personification to add interest to the text? So you've gone through and you've made your underlinings um, in the thinking part of this. And I even gave you an example of one from the text. And so now it's your turn to think about how these examples added interest to the text. The second part of your writing today is to think about this question. How might an individual's personal sense of home be influenced by social issues, the passage of time, and historical events? Provide specific details and evidence from the text. And you're gonna to wanna to answer that question using about five to seven sentences. Once you're done, Share your writing with someone and relate it back to the central question of the unit, which is, what does it mean to call a place home? This was our last lesson with A Changing World. In our next lesson, we'll start to read a new text called Back to My Own Country, an essay. We'll read a firsthand account of how it felt to grow up in Britain, having parents who came from a country that Britain had colonized. If you have questions before your next lesson, um, feel free to email your teacher. Their email address format is up on the screen here. And thank you so much for learning with me today. I look forward to teaching you again next time. Um, some re quick reminders before we leave. Don't forget to talk about your lesson with someone. Don't forget to read 20 minutes and complete a reading log entry. And finally, don't forget to practice your reading fluency using the first or second page of your weekly reading. Thanks very much, and I'll see you again soon.